Are you having phone problems at home and not sure what to look for? Not sure if your VoIP provider or device is working right? Well, stay tuned. I want to show you some ways to see what's going on. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to test those RJ11 phone jacks in your smart home. And this includes VoIP devices. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon Flash Briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Here's what we're going to be covering. That's how to test the RJ11 phone jacks in your home. We're going to go over the required items. It's really only going to be two, probably less than $20. And then we'll talk about testing the phone jacks and testing the VoIP devices. You might see some differences, but for the most part, they should come out the same. If you've already got network cable in your smart home, and if you're watching these videos, you probably do, you pretty much have an idea of the kind of testing you're looking at. But there's a few things we're going to want to look at, and that's going to help you have just a few extra tools in your bag of tricks to make things a little bit easier. Now, the first thing you're going to want to have is this outlet tester. And basically what this does, it's going to tell you if it sees the voltage or voltages on the line that need to be there. For the most part, you should see just DC if the line is running idle to where there's no phone calls in process or somebody trying to call you up. So this is going to be at least a good no-go if you're even getting voltage to the outlet because without seeing the voltage, the phone's not going to work, nor is anything else. The next thing you're going to have is a telephone test set. This one is far more affordable than the big boy test set that I've got. And this is something that is going to be very handy. In another life, I had to do a little bit of phone wiring and I've got a, about a $300 telephone butt set and I haven't used it in years but it's been very helpful when I needed it. Now this is something that's more likely to help you because it has several things in it. Number one you can see if caller ID is passing and it's going to be a very lightweight very small test set so that if you've got a phone that swears that it's working or you think that it is you can plug in this one and if this one doesn't work either, that pretty much tells you that the phone is the problem. There are a couple of accessories that come with this. You can, there's an inline coupler you see to the lower right. That's going to allow you to hook into an existing telephone line. So if you've got it already being extended, you can test it at the extension before you go all the way back to the wall outlet. The clips you see to the left allow you to clip directly onto the bare wires. So if you're still not getting it at the outlet, you can clip onto the actual wires behind that wall plate when you take it off the wall and see if it's even making it that far. And that helps you isolate an outlet problem. So that's, it's at least some tools. You may not need these a whole lot, but to quote a certain credit card commercial, it's priceless when you've got them. Now let's go to some more information that you want to have. Now with RJ11, you've got four wires. Where with the RJ45 for network, you've got eight. Typically in a residential environment, you're going to see pins two and three, which are the middle of the two, I mean the middle of the four pins. And that's typically what you're going to see in a residential environment. Now for small business operations, or if you've got a little more sophisticated home phone setup, you can actually run two lines to the same RJ11 jack. Lines two will go to pins one and four, which are the outside pins. Now, it's most important on that, that if you're going to do that, you've got to have a phone that understands about two-line operation, because if not, you're only going to get the first line, and then it's going to be kind of frustrating until that's uh, been identified as the problem. There are some voltages to keep in mind. For the most part, you should only see DC voltage, and I pulled this off of industry standard information. So you should typically with the line at rest or not being used, you should see about 50 to 60 volts DC. And if you've got a digital multimeter, like you've seen me talk about here on the channel other times, then this you'll help be able to see this. When the phone ringing happens, that's when you need to be a little bit careful. It's supposedly going to be coming in with AC. It's more important, the voltage goes higher and you will get a little bit of a tingle if your hands are on the bare wires when you've got an incoming call. To see what's going on when the phone line's actually in use, you will see the voltage varying between 6 to 12 volts, and there's going to be what they call modulated DC signal. So if you're looking at it with a voltmeter or an oscilloscope, you're going to see a waveform or a changing voltages depending on the talking that's online or what is actually being passed. So something to keep about on that, and this is at least going to give you some information. In my case, I don't have a hard line coming into the house anymore. I've got everything running over VoIP, but the same thing still applies. So you can see I've already got my Polycom uh, OBI 200. So whether you've got this, you've got UMA, if this is how you tie into your phones in the house, then you pretty much know where to start working at this point. This device right here is going to tell you if it even see voltage 
coming out of the outlet. And it helps you identify because of the colors, if it's the lines are correct, if they've been flipped, shouldn't be a problem if they're flipped, but that could be a problem. I'll defer to those who've really gotten into the weeds on this one. I've yet to see it be a problem, but at least they tell you about it. it tells you if it sees the AC voltage, or more importantly, if it sees nothing lit up like you're seeing now, because the lights you're going to see are going to come right up over in here, that that will tell you if it's not seeing anything at all. And if you've got nothing lit up, then the phone line's dead. So you've got to backtrace to where it comes up to you. So we will just temporarily take this out, plug it in on the back of the OBI 200. Voila, you see what's lit up right there. So that tells you if it's crossed or if it's AC voltage, at least says on a single line situation, that's what you should be seeing. And at least it gives you a snowball's chance to know what's going on. Well, now I've switched over to the telephone test set because this was less than well, both the items, this one and this were, was bill was like less than $20 on Amazon. So really it's something, even if you're not running a phone system at home, having these two items to troubleshoot it certainly gives you a leg up if you have to bring the phone company out, if you're still running hardline phones. And if you have a VoIP service like I've got, then you can go back to the provider. Hey, the outlet's dead on the device. Let's get it replaced. Now, when you plug it in, at least with the OBI, it's signaling out what it thinks is the extension but now here's where the test set really comes into play. It will tell you on an incoming call, takes it just a second to establish here, and you'll have a couple of rings come through before you see the caller ID. But see, so you can see it coming through right there, and it at least shows you that caller ID is passing. And when caller ID first came out, I had to spend, it was about $150 for a device that had separate caller ID on it because that phone caller ID was just new enough. It wasn't in a lot of your more budget friendly phones. So this is something that's very handy to have and it's going to serve you rather well moving forward because you've now got two pieces of test equipment that will help you see is the problem the phone, is it the device? If say no caller ID is coming through, then that may be a service provider issue or a configuration issue in the VoIP device where your service terminates. But this at least gives you a leg up on what to look at. And it's one more thing you can do to troubleshoot it before you start tearing your hair out and questioning your choice of equipment or professions. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.